Hello everyone, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is Prehistoric Facts special episode number 124, and I'm going to talk about a very particular Ice Age mammal, and that Ice Age mammal is... Elasmotherium. So here is an artist's rendition of Elasmotherium, type of hairy rhinoceros. Now, Elasmotherium means plated beast. Length is 20 feet or 6 meters. Height is 8.5 feet or approximately 2.5 meters. Weight 4 tons or 8,000 pounds. Lived 2.6 million years ago to 50,000 years ago. Late Pliocene to the Pleistocene. Found in mostly throughout the the uh, continent of, Lora of uh, Eurasia, excuse me, Eurasia, and it was found by Johann Fischer in 1808, so a very long time ago. So in these pictures here, so here's the whole con here's the whole continent of, Eur of Eurasia. So you so Elasmotherium is basically mostly found in northern Eurasia. So it's actually found in the northern Eurasian countries. So basic, so probably from like France all the way to Siberia. So that's pretty much where it was going to be found. And here's a skeleton of Elasmotherium. And so we don't see a horn on the skeleton. It's because the horn is made up of a different material than bone. And I'll get that get to that in a little bit. And so here's a size chart down here of Elasmotherium. So it's a pretty big uh, mammal, and it's uh, two times bigger than any rhinoceros today. So it's a really big rhinoceros. So Elasmotherium, it belongs to the odd-toed ungulates. So only uh, odd even number, so uh, odd numbered uh, toes. So like one, three. Five, uh, those types of things. I believe it is three-toed, if I remember correctly. And of course, it, Elasmotherium belongs to the Rhinocero today uh, family. And, uh, and you can see from those pictures, uh, Elasmotherium would be covered with fur, and, and because most rhinoceroses today are not hairy at all. They do have some hair, mainly like on the tail and some parts of the body, just very thin, very minute amounts, but Elasmotherium is covered all over uh, with fur. Now the horn would actually be six feet long, so that is a pretty long horn. So that is a pretty big horn, and uh, I don't think you want to get, I don't think you want to be uh, injured by that horn. And the horn is made up of keratin, so it's the same thing that your what your hair is made of, and also what your fingernails are made of. So that's what uh, Elasmotherium's horn is made of, and that's particularly mostly of other rhino horns, is that it's just made up of keratin, the same stuff from your from your actual hair and fingernails. And of course, Elasmotherium would not have any that, that many predators that would actually take down a full-grown adult. That's because, you see, a full-grown adult can take care of itself. And it also, it lived in sol solitary, in a, in a solitary life, and so because they don't interact with a lot of their own species that much, unless if it's during the mating season. Uh, possibly females could actually uh, get together from time to time, but uh, being how large they are, they probably would possibly accompany each other, possibly like to take care of their calves and and uh, the, mostly their young, so that way they can actually make sure that predators don't get to those uh, those juveniles. But uh, we'll, but uh, we still don't know yet. The environment in Elasmotherium lived in it was cold and dry, it's because it was in the Ice Age. Uh, glaciers were covering no uh, northern Europe and Asia, so that, like I said, uh, Elasmotherium would be living in those particular areas. Elasmotherium did not migrate; they did not migrate, so they actually stayed where they stayed. So. They didn't bother to actually migrate because it would be a waste of energy to actually migrate. And so they pretty much stayed where they're supposed to stay. And it had tundra-based tundra -based plants. So if you actually look at like places like in northern Canada, Alaska, uh, parts of Siberia, uh, you would find tundra-based plants. Uh, and there's plenty of trees. There's a lot of grass. There's little shrubs. 
uh, other kinds of animals that were actually around in the winter time where it was really cold it would be just mammals and birds uh, just be living around there. But in the summers, uh, lots of insects, some reptiles were actually around, uh, birds, and of course, other mammals, of course. Now, the predators that Elasmetherium would face when they're juveniles would be cave lions, sometimes cave bears, but also possibly humans. And because uh, you see, Neanderthals would actually be a really big threat for Elasmetherium, especially with their young, because a lot of Neanderthals and, and, uh, our species, Homo sapiens, uh, didn't even bother to actually go after a full-grown adult because it's too risky to do it because you can get hurt because you can get injured that way. Uh, cave bears would only scavenge off of a off of a dead Elasmetherium carcass, but cave bears would or cave lions, excuse me, would actually be the bigger threat for the juveniles. So Elasmetherium had to be wary of cave lions. And of course, extinction of Elasmetherium, you know, the climate began to warm up around 50,000 years ago. So the and so plant life started to change a little bit. Uh, so the glaciers were starting to retreat a little bit uh, at that particular time because it was warming up. And uh, humans also were using the resources that Elasmetherium relied on too. So humans also actually kind of played a part in it, but it's mostly due to climate change. So the plants changed. Uh, the total environment changed, so it could not withstand warmer climates, so it actually just went extinct uh, in that particular time when it was starting to warm up. And so, sorry if this is a little bit blurry. Uh, this is actually 50,000 years ago in the Pleistocene, and so you can see how much of the glaciers were actually covering uh, on uh, Eurasia, right here in northern Eurasia. And so, yeah, so... Around this particular time, this is when uh, the glaciers started to retreat a little bit more. Uh, just started to retreat. So they, but uh, this was not the last period of the ice age of the Pleistocene. Fifty thousand years ago was not the last period. That actually, that actually happened around ten thousand years ago. Uh, so that actually happened ten thousand years ago. So, so the map would look completely different uh, ten thousand years ago, where there's not many glaciers covering. Uh, northern, like northern parts of North America and also Eurasia, so that's what you get. Now the next episode would be a QA and a episode, and that'll be in January 4th of 2019. So if you got any questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com, or just go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris. Like the page, you guys should post your questions on the wall or in the comment section, but remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me at uh, at Twitter, uh, on Twitter, at C-S-G-R-A-L-L, -L. that's my Twitter page, I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you, and also for younger people out there, to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you could have for good education. It's very important to have a good education. So with a good education, a good, a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys in, 20, in 2019. So happy holidays to everybody. Be safe. Have a happy new year to all, and let's make 2019 another great year in paleontology. So I'll see you guys in 2019.